Hey guys, this is the Wiggleman, and welcome back to Loot Order. Today we're going to be painting Pumpkin Jack, the eye collector of Panshaw. Uh, this is the Halloween special model uh, for subscribers for Loot Studios, and it's absolutely gorgeous. I love the detail, the grimness of it. Oh, it's just oozing character. Um, so consider this my first Halloween special. And to celebrate the first Halloween special, I just want to say thank you very much for all my new subscribers. Um, we're up to 100 now, so brilliant stuff, fantastic. It really does mean a lot to me. Um, if you're not subscribed and you found your way here, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe to the uh, channel. Uh, it, it really does, uh, it just gives me that uh, validation um, as I do what I enjoy. Um, and if you learn anything from this, um, please let me know. Uh, because as long as one person learns from every video I do, then I'm, I'm chuffed to bits, honestly. So we're well into the model now. Um, I'll be using Army Painter Speed Paints to do the base colours on the models. Uh, you might have noticed on the top of the pumpkin there, there were some black splotches that came through. Uh, this is what happens when you don't wash your resin models properly after 3D printing. Uh, I was a bit too, of an eager, too much of an eager beaver with this one. Um, I do rem remedy it down the road, but yeah, uh, uncured resin is allergic to acrylic paints and causes absolute nightmares. So to remove those black splotches, I just gave it a bit of an airbrush over the top. Uh, the key is, if you do have this happen to one of your models, unfortunately, you will always have a glossy look. No matter how much matte varnish you put on it, it will always seep through, essentially. Uh, the key is not to agitate that area too much when painting it, hence why I use the airbrush for that highlight. And then adding in some shadows, uh, just to, again, um, give a bit more contrast to the model. A black speed paint for the crow on the top of the fence. Um, I was really, really happy uh, how the black speed paint came out actually. Uh, so I just, I pretty much for the rest of the project left the crow as is. Uh, following that, I then went over the fence on the back of uh, Pumpkin Jack, uh, just with a normal chocolatey brown. I've Honestly, never really used uh, speed paints or contrast paints before. I've used them on the odd miniature, uh, but this is the first time I've I've kind of incorporated it into a project. And I feel like, uh, you know, a lot of creators will say, oh, um, you know, speed paints, contrast paints, they're cheating. Oh, airbrushes are cheating. But realistically, it's another tool for your painting arsenal. Um, any serious painter will, will, will totally agree with that. Um, and yeah. Continuing to experiment with the speed paints, I decided to try it through the airbrush, and I do love uh, the richness of the orange uh, uh, Army Painter speed paint here. It, it's 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 very very bright. Um, following on from that, I also take the black speed paint and go in between on the on the ground in between the pumpkins on the grounds just to add a bit more contrast. I didn't go. Uh, I didn't want to go over the top on the base. I didn't want to paint it up too much because I wanted most of the attention drawn to the face of the model. Once that had dried, I gave it a matte varnish and started hitting the model with our AK Interactive Rust Streaks. Good old Rust Streaks. Uh, I went over the entire model with it, um, following on from my previous video, which was the uh, the uh, Marine Battle Suits uh, by Luke Studios. That was a very uh, technical, sharp edges, edge highlighting everywhere kind of a video. Whereas this one, I wanted uh, to unwind a bit and just literally throw paint at the model until I was happy with it.
Now, the big risk when you use things like rust streaks, when you're using your enamel washes like that, it does tie the model very, very much closer together in, in regards to color values. Um, so your wood and your, your, your brown on your wood, your orange on your pumpkin, um, because it's already a warm color, it's, it's basically gonna make it look very, very similar. Um, so I went back over the woods uh, with almost a cocky uh, dry brush, just to bring out the highlights a bit more in it. So we move on to highlighting the uh, the main event, the pumpkin head. Uh, I took a Vallejo game color, uh, a brighter orange, and mixed it with a drop of uh, glaze medium and began to glaze on different layers. For the recesses on the pumpkin, I took our army painter speed paint brown and painted them into the recesses. Didn't thin it down or anything, um, and I was really, really uh, happy with how it, it ended up looking. I then base coated all of the eyes with a cool off white and began to dot in the pupils uh, just with a base coat of black to begin with. Uh, the idea here was because it's the eye collector of Pancho, I wanted the eyes to be all looking in different directions as if there was still part of the victim inside of it. Gruesome and gory I know, spooky I know, but it's Halloween so I get to do what I want. While I'm waiting for the pupils to dry out, I took some of Stuart Semple's Black 3.0, the quote unquote blackest commercially available black in the world. Um, so I, I've, I've, I've heard tell that, that it's not fantastic paint for miniature painting, but I wanted to give it a go. Um, I think the issue is because it's an extreme, extremely thick color uh, due to just probably how many matte particles are inside of it. That's what makes it come through thick. However, for recess painting, I think it's a fantastic uh, tool to have in your arsenal. And while it's not gonna give kind of a black hole effect, which I'd have hoped and dreamed for it to do, um, it does give that extra bit of depth into the model, which, which gives, gives the face a bit more of a, a punch. I'll certainly be looking to incorporate it into more of my projects down the line. And if anything, it's fantastic for uh, painting the rims of bases as well. With the rest of the colors added onto the face, I then began to paint the actual uh, irises in the eyes. Uh, I simply wanted, I wanted to do different colored eyes. Again, it's the eye collector, he's collected eyes. He's sticking them in his socket holes um, and began to just paint around the center of the pupils that I'd put in. 
Uh, a nice little tip for painting eyes, at least at the 72mm uh, scale, is to try and... Uh, you want to add kind of a, a line of black shade across the top of the eye uh, eyeball uh, where it meets the, the, the eyelid, and then you want to add a uh, kind of a purpley, almost flesh-coloured tone around the bottom of the eyelid. Uh, it just gives that bit more, that extra bit more depth to it. With the face pretty much complete by my eyes, um, I began to paint the cloth, his loincloth, his trousers, his pants. Um, a friend of mine had shared with me the night before I started painting this, the Sandman uh, uh, animated short. It was a stop motion animated short, very, very old. Um, but the aesthetic of the Sandman must have uh, subconsciously really stuck out to me because I didn't realise until I'd finished painting his legs that uh, actually it was a, a very similar colour scheme to, to the Sandman in the animated short, which I'll leave a link for up here if you'd like to go watch it. Whilst I was waiting for the many layers on his legs to dry out, I decided that the, the, the wood wasn't woody enough for me. So I went back over with our speed paint brown, which is 
kind of carried uh, in terms of a colour for this project and went all over the body again just to change the tone on it. Once his legs were dried out, I took titanium white ink and just airbrushed it over the top of the pants, uh, just because I felt like the the shadows on the highlights were a bit too sharp for my liking, and this just softened things up a bit more. To give the model a little bit more character, I stippled on some different shades of brown around the base of his uh, underpants, uh, just to show that he's been travelling through the woods, he's been travelling through muddy terrain, searching for your eyes. I then went around the rest of the model, just painting in all the little details, like his nice, lovely little collection of heads, eyeless heads, um, his tools on his back and on his sides, uh, and just adding a bit more detail to the pumpkins. Uh, his scythe, I, uh, you might have noticed, has changed colour several times during this process. Uh, it was only till the end that I really decided that I, I figured it looked like stone. Uh, it felt like the tendrils of the pumpkin patch had wrapped around the stone of the scythe to grab it, so I painted it in more of a, a stone colour. There you go. Um, and just to finish off the add touch, odd, odd touches before the uh, final reveal, I added in some, uh, some blue shading. Um, once again, I'd like to thank you for joining me in this video. Thank you for subscribing. Um, thank you for making it this far. Again, it means the world to me. I really enjoy doing this, and uh, yeah. Enjoy the reveal.